people who really cares. But you haven't seen this band yet. They're called the Looters. And these guys don't have a record deal and it, with a major company. And I think that they're quite comfortable that way. And when you see them live in concert, I think you'll start buying tickets to see them live in concert as well. This is the Looters live in the Much environment. Go ahead. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> of the looters uh, well we started uh, many years ago in 1982 actually the band formed in a, and uh, we've been playing um, we started in basement parties and built our way up to uh, other venues and now we're out here you know after a few records your music has been described as world music and mm -hmm. I was curious about your definition of what world music is well basically it's it's uh, it's influenced by lots of different cultural uh, you know strains from from all over the world i mean it's not basically any specific thing and i think the i think the thing is that to differentiate it from other forms of popular music it was kind of like well you know for lack of a better word and also i would add that it also has to do with our own outlook about about music and the world and that we feel like uh, there should not be borders and barriers distinctions made for marketing or for any other reason that that music is for people and that's that's what it's about World music to me usually is a description of the, the style of the actual instruments. Mm -hmm. Is it also a type of lyric that one sings? I, I don't know. I mean, in our case, yes, because we're speaking about things that we feel uh, in our own lives, our own direct experience, but we feel like uh, wherever you are, you're on this planet, so you must be part of the world. And uh, regardless of the instrumentation, I mean, we're, we're normally a band with a lot of other instruments, but we, we feel like we can play music anywhere under any circumstances, any part of the world, and we can communicate with people. And in fact, um, whenever we get that opportunity, whether it's here or in Nicaragua or in Europe or wherever, um, we're going to do that. Do you always sing in English? 
Uh, there's a bit of Spanish mixed in here on our next song. The first word is dance in Spanish. Why? Uh, partly because it's, it's a beautiful sound, partly because the, the actual musical style is, is Hispanic, partly because we come from San Francisco where it's extremely, uh, there's a large Hispanic community and the influence of the culture is great and you can't really grow up there without hearing it and being um, inspired by it. Do you want to sing that song for us right now? Sure. All right, so uh, this is the second song from the Looters on Much. to strangers it might be dangerous keep to your own kind father father all i see is people are people which one of us is blind you say latest album it's called Jericho Down this is the uh, the cassette here I keep on calling it album I don't know what to call it anymore I don't either CD cassette music so is it available in Canada yes it is it should be now I mean, now it's how is to be it available now. because I see that you have it's on monster music right so it's distributed up here by trend I believe and it's uh, 
I mean, and we're, we, have, we just got here, so we haven't checked out the record yeah. stores, but maybe everybody else can do that for us. Now, this is your second album, as far as I know. The first one was right. released in Ireland, and right. you ha I have pages of people praising you to the roofs, and yet it wasn't a big success commercially. Right. In retrospect, do you know why? Um, I think that maybe there's, there's, it's always complicated. It's never a simple thing. But um, I think in some ways it has to do with the, uh, the fact that this stuff doesn't really fit in a particular niche. And let's face it, you know, commercializing culture is, is going to mean separating it off into little categories that are easy to sell. And um, I'm afraid that that's kind of uh, not where we're at. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think that that's the way the people feel. I don't think that's the way the public feels. I think the public is only concerned with good music versus bad. And that when they're exposed to something that is sung with, from the heart, then they're going to be interested in it and they're going to you know, support it. That's why we're still doing it, because the people have supported us. Mm -hmm. You still drive a cab? Uh, right now I'm not, but yes, that's how I make a living. Yeah. Yeah. The Looters, the name of the band, sounds to me like a bunch of people who steal every, other people's music. Where does the name come well, from? Well, actually, that's kind of how it started. <laughs> we were jamming and doing obscure songs that we uh, lifted off of people that we loved, and that was part of it. Also, part of it was back in uh, you know that period, there were a lot of riots going on actually in, in England and um, we read about them and they, the press, the media described the looters as like they were some sort of alien beings but <laughs> we sort of imagined well if, if this was happening in San Francisco that's what they'd call us. So um, you know it's just, it's just the general public under certain circumstances I think. And finally I know that um, lyrically that's a very important thing for you. You call yourself a storyteller. Mm -hmm. What kind of stories do you tell? Well uh, I think that we, 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 we want to talk about what's happening in the world, but it's like, um, I think what, what, what in interests people or what draws people in is their own experience. And we feel like the value of people's experience has been denigrated again by the, the, the commodification of it. If you take something and you, you turn it into something for sale, it loses its real value, which has to do with soul and experience. And unfortunately, the majority of people working everyday jobs, everyday lives, you know, tend to look at their own experience as like worthless, you know, and that you have to be an icon or a star or some kind of, you know, uh, you got to be in the tabloids or something to be worth anything. And so we, we try to populate our songs with real people who we've known ourselves and who are, who are the, you know, they're the, it's the most interesting and exciting lives of all. And hopefully in, in investing our songs with that feeling, uh, we can give it back to the people who made them possible. Why don't you put your lyrics on your cassette? Oh, well, you've got to talk to the record company about that. <laughs> They're on the CD, but I guess it was just, you know, money. Yes. I wasn't impressed, boys. I was trying right. to read this and trying to understand well, it a little better. Well, I'm glad you better. bring that up. Uh, say, right. it, say it loud. Maybe All they'll right. put it on the next run. We're going to play a video from you from your last album. Because okay. we don't have one for this album. Why not? It just hasn't been made yet. I mean, it's with a small label, you're talking small budgets, and you're talking about... Uh, one sort of step by step. You know, you make the record, you do some touring, and hopefully you generate enough sales to justify spending the money on a, uh, uh, you know, video. And you're performing when and where? Bamboo, tonight, down the block. All right, and any other Canadian dates? Yeah, we're playing Montreal tomorrow night at the Terminal. We're playing in, uh, in Kingston at the Hangar, I think it's called. We're playing in Ottawa at the Saw Gallery on Friday. We're playing in Guelph on Saturday. Oh, fabulous. So one day at a time. The Looters on Much, and here's an older video from, them, from their previous LP, in Stereo Nation's Music Station. Mm -hmm.